in nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Accepit panem in sanctas at venerabiles a manus suas. <clears throat> Hac facite in meam commemorationem. Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scalitz, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuhof. You might not know that Henry recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. So, Henry, you may begin. Now I'm curious, curious which one of them will puke first. Brothers and sisters, let me go straight to the point. I'd like to talk about the church and how corrupt it is. Boy, as a cheek. One should not believe in the church, because the church is not God. God is above all things, and the church is but a means to salvation, which the prelates do not care to hear. He's right. It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, cumans, hunger, and chaos. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver, they show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned by covetousness. They trade everything. Everything is for sale. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay, and you will have absolution. And the prelates sin and give themselves absolution. For well, shame. Shame upon them. It is the custom of the gluttonous prelates and monks to preach against sin. But what do they know of us ordinary folk? Let us remember the marriage at Cana, where our Lord Jesus Christ himself feasted with the other guests and drank his fill. And when the wine was gone, he performed a miracle and created more. He, whose companions were poor travellers, simple folk, prostitutes and troublemakers, performed a miracle so the feast could continue. Now that's the kind of sermon I like to hear. No, brothers and sisters. Jesus did not condemn alcohol. Drink to lighten the cross you bear in this veil of tears, but not with such abandon that you cannot keep holy the Sabbath. For there should be moderation in all things, and it is not drinking itself that is sinful, but intemperance and beastly indulgence. He's right. Enough about sin, which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you pay enough coin to Mother Church. Look at them. They, they, they booze like hypocrites and, and, and buy expensive jewels. They, they servants of God. And, and, and that is not right because, because Christ preached poverty. And only poverty and temperance are true virtues. And it was almost getting interesting. God sees what is happening on earth, and he is filled with righteous wrath that those who should seek the salvation of souls instead seek mammon and the idle comfort of lucrative posts. 
Blessed are the shepherds who share the poverty of their flock, who are as one with you and bear with you the burden of this earthly pilgrimage, who do not condemn your venial sins. Why, all honour to Godwin. Let him drink like one of us. That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. <laughs>